Okay, so uh, my name is Haikwang Lo, I'm from USA Toronto. Uh, so don't be confused with Toronto with Waterloo, right? So uh, from Toronto, not Waterloo. <laughs> okay. uh, I'm going to talk about cyber security in the quantum world, so basically QKK, quantum key solution. Um, so I should find some from the agencies for the money. Uh, let's see. Ah, okay, so uh, QKG, so uh, I should um, just tell people where QKG come from, right? So just congratulate people. So um, of course, people know uh, these three guys, right? Um, Banda and Basa, they invented uh, QKG, uh, PPA for protocol in 1984. It's a prepare measure protocol. You prepare something and bot measure something. And archive cut, let's see. Uh, of course, people know Akaka here. <laughs> you send the guy So uh, he invented uh, B91 poker, a uh, cut poker, based on N Kangerman and based on some sort of casting of Barry Nikaki. So get some sort of interesting quantum mechanics going on. Um, this year is a good year to cover QKG uh, because 2018, the Wolf Fight in Physics was awarded to um, Ben and Bassa for inventing QKG and uh, Quantum calibration, I guess. Okay. Um, just to tell you, I have a lab here. Okay, so I actually do some experiments. Not I, I mean, my students, my postdocs. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, well, it's a general introduction, right? So you can stop me anytime, you can ask questions anytime. I don't know how many of you are on QKG, so I will just go with the basics. So uh, I apologize to experts who, who know the subject. Um, the NSA, the US National Security Agency, has this quantum interest, quantum fever. And in 2015, yeah, 2015, they announced they will transition to post-quantum cryptography, post-quantum. So what does it mean to be quantum resistant? So quantum computers are coming, so they want to be quantum resistant. And then NIST, the National Institute of US, right? Uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, is we bring proposals for um, post-quantum crypto system. And again, I think there's one submission from uh, NUS as well. So uh, I think they received, I forgot, I mean, 85 proposals or something. So they got a lot of proposals for post-quantum crypto system. Okay, so now the question is, of course, right, why do they care about um, quantum, right? Why don't they just use what they are using right now, like electric curve crypto systems? And of course, the answer would be for this argument would be source algorithm, right? So in 1994, I think everyone knows about source algorithm. So he invented factorization algorithm, which is useful for cracking RSA, discrete log problems, which is useful for the free Hellman key exchange. So, so that's in trouble. And in addition, it's also one. It's also uh, you can also break the electrical crypto system, which is what is used commonly in this case. Okay, and for this reason, right? So there's lots of interest in. Um, being quantum resistant. And I just, just mentioned that there have been a lot of progress recently. So uh, this is not the end of story. So recently, right? So uh, in even 2016, there have been people looking into how to break symmetric crypto systems based on quantum algorithms. So it's an ongoing subject. Okay. Let's see. And if you read the news, you know why right, lots of companies in the US, Intel, Google, they are building quantum computers. So these are some examples. This is from Intel, this is from Google. Um, they don't have good many qubits, 49 or 72 qubits. And moreover, right, you can go online where right, there's a free IBM quantum experience, where right? you can have a, a quantum experience with your coffee online. Just, uh, <laughs> it's free. I think it's free, right? I have never tried. Has anyone tried a quantum experience? Does it work? <laughs> okay, good. So it's actually uh, it's there, um, and I think people know, right? So in Europe, in US, putting a lot of money, Singapore as well, right? So um, in the UK, um, the money is like billion of dollars, right? Uh, in European Union and billions in the US, and in China, right? They talk about talk, they talk about something even larger, right? Ten billion. Right? Uh, apparently, they mean ten billion US dollars, right? Surprise. Um, and they're going to make uh, the first national lab. You will be on quantum information science, so it just seems like something serious. Okay, so uh, I guess people probably know about QKG a little bit. So they're commercial security systems. You can, um, most of them are based on fiber. So if you have fiber vision and box, you buy these boxes from companies like IT Concrete or uh, um, Quantum City Set or um, 
I don't know if metrics is selling it, but I, I use it for metric. <laughs> and uh, you can go fee based KPG based on telescopes. Right? People know about this experiment. <clears throat> in China, I guess it's quantum network, right? you read the news, right? you saw this quantum network going from Shanghai to Beijing with uh, 32 nodes. So you have a trust the nodes, right? You do QKG between Beijing and the node. You trust this node, you chance you uh, do big um, C chain, right? And I don't know the customers, but uh, in this slide, right, I think it's from Seek, from Kilcrip, right, they talk about customers being the banking industry, uh, news agencies, and all that. And the big news, I think at least in China, is this uh, Guan the secular QKG. Um, they have different, different Guan stations. Uh, and of course, right, Alexander Link also were on QKG, maybe not uh, exactly with these stations, but. Uh, I saw, I had a lab crew, I saw a very nice uh, small satellite here in uh, Singapore. So there's something of interest not only for big countries like China, also in Singapore. Okay, let's see. Uh, oh yeah, this is, um, I think this slide is from Chen Wei Pen, um, and then uh, he has this fancy slide, I just uh, borrow it, right? and they do key exchange. When the satellite moves, right, you can do a key exchange with the other areas in China. And then they did an experiment also with um, Vienna, right? So they have a key exchange between Beijing and Vienna in you know, Austria. Okay, let's see. And in Canada, uh, Commerce General also works on uh, secular QKG. So it's really an international um, enterprise, right? In different countries, Japan, China, you, um, Canada, Singapore, and all that. Okay, so uh, what's the part of this colloquium? So my area is security. Okay, so I'm interested in understanding security of quantum key exchange. And if you read uh, different news, uh, just a few years ago, right, so uh, 2013, um, people say uh, physicists found <coughs> way to close this loophole, technological loopholes that left secrets open with eavesdropper. So I, let me give you a bit of introduction what the subject is. So um, basically, get different attacks, right? on the system and we need to secure QKK. Okay, uh, so, so far it's interesting. So let me just see, I should both QA, why we do QKK, what's QKK a little bit, so that's very quick because for this audience, I guess, well known. And go into security loopholes, how people can hack QA systems and look into different solutions. Um, just a list of different questions. I won't go into the details here. Okay, so, um, Cryptography, right? So the tra traditional cryptography based on computation assumptions. RSA is hard, but factorization is hard. But these are assumptions. And we know source algorithm, which means these assumptions may be broken. Okay, if someone made a quantum computer, a large scale one, right? So big quantum computers, all these, um, all these three cryptography systems would be broken. Okay, so that's a big uh, problem, right? And think about long-term security, right? So your DNA data, right? So you do DNA test, your data. You want to keep it for a long time. And government secrets, right? You want to keep it for a long time. Trade secrets, like formula of a cock, you want to keep it for a long time. For example, for in Canada, the Canadian census data, we want to keep it secure for 92 years. Right? 92 years is a very long time, right? Uh, so what this means is, oh, maybe you can say, okay, forget about it, right? So there's no quantum computer, let's worry about it later. But of course you can't because you, you have a future proof, right? So just remind people, right? I think most of you know about this, but just in case people don't know. Um, if someone, the eavesdropper, can factorize in 2000, so 21 can, right, next century, right? Already a big problem right now because she can decrypt all the traffic transmitted this year in 2018. Okay, what she does is you just save all the messages in her um, computer, right? And then she can wait for the quantum computer to be constructed in the future. IBM right, and, and uh, Google make a quantum computer in the future, right? So 50 years later, maybe because a quantum computer can, can crack the code and then they can decrypt all the messages and can learn about your DNA data, right? That would be, maybe that's okay for, for me, right? Uh, but that may not be very good for my son or my grandson, right? So that could be a problem for, uh, for, for your offspring. Okay, so the question becomes, right, uh, think about it. Uh, in the past, was there any computer 92 years ago? <laughs> and then, uh, let's see. Yeah, what a computer looks like 92 years from now. And um, 
I think in general it's ridiculous to think that we know what a computer looks like nine two years from now. Right? I have no idea what it looks like. Okay, um, and just to remind people, right? So first, the world's first electronic digital computer was called well, the, the unclassified ones, right? The classified ones, I don't know. Okay, the unclassified ones was the, as far as you know, it's constructed in nineteen forty six, and yeah, and it's a big room, right? Um, and gets not too much computing power. And that was not too, actually, not too long ago from, from now, right? And nowadays, right, people have smartphones, right? Um, they are much more powerful than these uh, old computers. And the question is, we have to uh, extrapolate to 21 can and think about what a computer looks like. And we want to make sure what we encrypt today will be secure against this kind of adversaries. Well, that's a problem we are trying to solve here. Any question about this? Okay, so uh, guess. Okay, so guess what? Computer science is a bad idea. So I'm trying to convince you. And we are physicists. Okay, at least I'm a physicist. So I want to go into quantum mechanics. So let quantum mechanics be a foundation of cryptography in here, and see what happens. Okay, so now we have quantum cryptography, and of course, right, people know about key exchange problems. So I just want to cover Bob, and we need some encryption key for transmission, and the message. Like this is the um, ping text, you can encrypt it in your cipher text, transmit to Bob. If, like if Chopper, if is listening, right, she can intercept this encrypted message. However, she has no idea what the key is, so she cannot decrypt. And in fact, right, people probably know about this one kind of method, um, which is perfectly secure. The key has to be as long as the message. Right? It's used once. Okay, you have a key, the key is as long as the message, you use it once, and you give it exclusive all and transmit. And you can prove that this is perfectly secure. This is proven by Shannon right, in um, 1949. Okay, so if I ask them to have the same key, which is very long, uh, again, as long as the message, again, it's perfectly secure. And get back a question. How could you transfer this long key in the first place? Right? If you can solve a key situation, get everything is gone. Okay, and castle key exchange, I think you people saw this slide, this slide, slide before. So uh, castle key is a string of C C1, right? So you can write this gam, key gam, in a piece of paper, 01101. You transmit it. But of course, Yves can copy, right? So Yves can just make the copy machine, and now Yves and Bob have the same key. And whatever Bob can do, Yves can do the same thing. And so all castle key exchange methods are insecure. Okay, you can do public key, but public key is based on computer assumption, right? So it's not really perfectly secure. Okay. And then we move on to QK key, quantum key exchange. So now you send quantum case in polarized photons. And good Bob. And in quantum mechanics, right, people know where right, you can start to know the quantum no cone name theorem. You cannot copy unknown quantum space. Okay, so I'm just going through the introduction very quickly because I think for this audience, right, people will probably know what these stuff already. Okay. Um, so maybe I can run through one just now. <laughs> okay, uh, so uh, clearly we want information theoretical secret based on fundamental laws of physics. Um, rather than computation assumption. We need a small amount of fundamental information. And any e shop attack will be caught. So if e shop, well, I guess there'll be some interest like that. Well, I won't go into BBA4, but you know, people know BBA4, like right? you have two two cool bases, right? Rectilinear diagonal, and I send four polarization to Bob. Bob perform one of good measurements and compare and so on and so forth. Okay, and think about experimental progress. So let's go experiment. So the first quick experiment is done here in 1992. And in 2007, right, people do long distance community already. So it's over 100 kilometers. So people have gone a long way in community experiments over, um, well, this is, I guess, 15 years, right? Just 15 years from here, 99 to 2007. Okay, so a lot of technology really go in the subject. Okay, this is good. Now let's move on to security, security loophole. So that's the main uh, subject I really want to talk about here. Yeah. Okay, BBA4, the protocol is very simple, right? So four state, two type of measurements. But in package, right, you, you buy these boxes from uh, companies like Concrete or Quantum CCAP, and the question is, do these boxes perform the quantum operations that you expect the theorists tells you, like these, these boxes doing these measurements or preparation? Do you believe that? 
and gets a big uh, challenge because uh, the information physics is really depends on not only the laws of physics, but also a model of a critical device. You have to assume you know what this device is doing. Okay? And think about this way, you don't even know what your graduate students are doing. Right? <laughs> 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 what well, this device are doing. Okay. <laughs> I don't know why I'm doing sometimes. Right? So, <laughs> And of course, they're hackers, right? So uh, people know about Kim Makarov, right? So, uh, so some hackers are hiding in some basement, right? Trying to hack on the system, right? Uh, and hacking is a big uh, subject these days, right? So uh, you know about all the cyber security issues, like right? information leakage, right? Um, I think Marriott, um, is Marriott, the Marriott Hotel, so I just got hacked, right? And, and so hacking is a big problem here, okay? Even in the quantum world, okay? And because of that, I. Right? Um, QKK under attack, actually it's not, the theory is fine, okay, theory is perfectly fine, no problem, right? you have security proof. But the real life implementation, the real life issues, like real life implementation of is under attack. And you can read the different news stories right, in different um, magazines, like Economist, uh, BBC News, American Technological Review, some Nature, and so people, People come back with quantum hackers. Hackers like quantum cryptographers. I guess it's not good, right? So I want to be able to see what's going on. Okay. Okay, let's think about it. So what are the problems? Okay, security is not only about physics, right? Physics is good. Okay, we like physics, but there are some assumptions. Theoretical assumptions on the device. Okay, so for the actual device, there's some coherent source, some weak coherent pulse from my laser. There's some single point detectors. They are not perfect, right? Now, what Eve can do is Eve can attack the source, or Eve can attack the detector. Okay, now let's think about these two problems, okay, one by one. Okay, let me focus on the first one, the source security first. Uh, before I do that, let's think about what we're trying to solve. So uh, someone is talking on the phone, and uh, the question is, can NSA, right, some serious adversary, right, uh, or maybe some agencies in some other countries, I don't know, so try to break QKG, so that's the problem. Okay, so let's think about assumptions at the QKG source. Um, well, this is not complete, right, just to give some idea of what people thought about before. So, we are sure we have perfect encoding. So you encode a state, right? 45, say vertical is vertical, right? It's not uh, a bit off, right? So perfect encoding. No side channels, right? Uh, when you say it's vertical, I mean, there's no one, right, who's uh, disclosing some secret information, right? It's really vertical, right? Again, there's no part, right? You just hear the noise, right? You know it's vertical, right? It's no side channel. Perfect quantum random generation, right? When you say, okay, you're generating zero or one, you know it's, this is random, right? Uh, if you have Correlation, right? You have two zero, right? Zero zero again is not random, right? So that's the problem. I think um, when well, people work on quantum random generation, right? So people know about this kind of area, like, why it's important. So perfect phase summarization, right? So in the QK circuit proof, you quite often we assume um, the phase is randomized in the QKK system, right? So if this is not true, right, then it's a problem. Perfect intensity seconds. Okay, so we assume we have some in Gikoyski intensity, so Gikoyski intensity is 0 0.1 or something. It's fixed. It's perfect. Okay, so this, these were the list like uh, five or ten years ago. That was the list, okay? And now uh, people have made progress. So let me tell you what progress people make to remove these assumptions right? um, in the last ten years. And let's think about encoding, perfect encoding. This is not necessary anymore, okay? Um, Previously, right, people assume perfect encoding, so uh, vertical is vertical, horizontal is horizontal. In practice, in experiment, we never have perfect encoding. Right? The phase could be close to zero, but could be off by right, plus or minus gamma zero. Right? Some gamma zero is some error you make right, in the voltage or something. Pi over Q could be some deviation, gamma one, uh, gamma two, and so on. Okay, so as a result, right, the state you got is not horizontal, it's horizontal plus some degree. It's not diagonal, plus some degree. Okay, and in fact, right, this is experimental result. We have, uh, I think this is IG500, an earlier version of IG concrete uh, device, research device that we use, and then we observe the phase modulation right, in the actual system. You start for tracking, and then it goes up, overshoot a bit, and then goes down. 
And this is not really fat, right? So it's fat shaking, okay? And uh, this is time, right? So this is time here. Um, yeah, time in nanosecond, okay? Okay, and this is come from the phase modulator that we are considering, okay? Questions? Okay, and because of this source for the actual key may not be proven to be secure. It may be secure, but it's not proven to be secure, right? So in theory, we like security proofs, right? So we want to prove it's secure. Okay, so that's why we look into this problem, and um, that's um, a paper that uh, Kiyoshi Kamaki and um, a bunch of us wrote back in 2014. And what we found is you can prove security even with some encoding error. Okay, in this case, what we need, so we assume we have qubit assumptions, so we actually have a qubit, right? There's no side channels, okay? However, um, we assume, um, if we allow the Encoding could be not perfect, so instead of, uh, say, uh, vertical, you could be a bit off by some small angle. Okay? But because you have a qubit assumption, it's really a qubit, so you cannot really enhance the source for, so the, uh, whatever the for is, uh, is still not enhanceable by the loss. Okay, this is why we call this loss correlation. The loss is not a big problem in this type of uh, setup. Okay? If you have a single photon, it's fine. And you can actually prove, in this case, we prove that it's secure even with this case. It gives the same performance as a false gate. And you use some basis mismatch gate because actually high performance. Okay, so that's a key range. So this is a key range versus this can in log scale. So this is log key range. So this is one bit. I uh, can go. I think it's one bit. Uh, oh, sorry, maybe this is kind of minus one, right? So it could be um, can go minus one bit, can go minus two bit, can go minus three bit, right? And this is uh, this can in kilometer in fiber. And so the good thing is uh, it's quite good, it's loss column, so which means you get a good key rate even with some encoding error. Okay, so that's a good news. Um, so it works even with encoding error. Any questions about this? And experimentally, we also demonstrated that um, um, in an experiment, so we actually measure some sort of imperfection in the system, and then we perform QQ secure QQQ with an imperfect device, because that was published uh, in this paper here in 2015. Okay, so uh, so this is not really my work here. So the next thing I will talk about is Kikoiski with QKK with liquid sauce, and it's done by Kiyoshi Kamaki, Marco Skirky, and um, Marco um, Nakam Marina. <laughs> so he's in Koshiba. And uh, sorry, I'm butchering his name. But <laughs> so what's the idea? So I guess what if you send in some um, signal, right, to the um, other system and try to learn something about the with our refraction, or learn something about the, the, uh, the modulation. Okay, get some chosen horse. No, not like chosen horse, chosen pony, right? Very small amount of chosen horse. Get some information leakage. Okay, here. And it turns out, like, the key way GK substantially gives you this information leakage via the side channel. The side channel comes from E, E sends a power and with the refraction. However, you, are, you can allow a small amount of uh, chosen horse, right? So if the, um, well, it's just, it has a mu here, so um, if you can see the leakage, it's very small, like can go minus uh, 11 or something, like can, you don't care, okay? However, in general, like, if you increase the, in the side channel, right, we, you, get, you will get lower key rate. So the side channel, like, how much side channel is coming out is really a really big problem in this kind of setup. Okay, so that's uh, one result people get. Uh, random number generation, there have been lots of um, experiments and theory on the subject. I won't go into details, but I just say that, okay, you need good random numbers, right? And you can generate this by quantum mechanics as well. Okay, phase randomization. Previously, the Kikasi QQQ required perfect phase randomization. The phase has to be perfectly random. And that's a very strong assumption, right? You can never make a perfect perfectly random source, right, in, in a way. And because if you go, if you do it actively, right, you take infinite number of bits of random numbers. Okay, your question is, can you do phase randomization with a finite number of bits? And it turns out you can, right? So we prove that you can achieve secure QKK with only a few bits per signal pulse, okay? So, and uh, so what's this curve? So, Okay, you have infinite phase, of course, you get the uh, perfect key rate formula, key rate versus key sense is very good. You have only one phase, so key rate is not so good, but if you just increase it by two, you get both up a bit, increase by three, like three phases, right? So just 
zero um, two pi over three pi over and two pi over, and four pi over three, you get something like this. So that's already very good. Okay, so the key point is just using a few bits of uh, random number, you can randomize the phase, the phase very well, and you get a very high key rate. So that's proven in this uh, paper that Sun uh, Ma and his student did uh, with, with me. Okay, so this phase transition works. In kind of fluctuation, so in kind of, the of the laser pulse is not perfect, right? So it's always fluctuating in time, right? Because of temperature change, right? or maybe some voltage changes or something, we don't know what happened. Right? And so there have been uh, quite a number of papers, but um, at least I could mention two of them. So this is by um, by Japanese group, um, including people like um, Koki Yuraski, um, Masako Kawashi, and collaborators. It's published in uh, MPJ Quant Information uh, just this year. And we also have a paper, uh, also, um, also by some of Japanese collaborators, and also, um, I think, Marcos Kirky, and I'm trying to remember all the people involved. <laughs> Koji is involved, and Kiyoshi is involved. I'm also involved in this paper. And uh, so we talk about in cancer fluctuation, how we can prove security, okay? Um, in our paper, we prove the result when we assume um, the second choice, so the, the in cancer setting, right? And the, uh, what, what you're encoding, like, uh, doesn't lead that way, so there's no leakage of information um, in this, uh, of the setting into the, the um, memory, right? So of course, if you remember what, if your system remember what has been encoded and then disclose it later, that could be a problem, right, physically. And uh, in, in this paper, I think they try to uh, think about post-selection, right? Try to choose some sort of post-selection. If you have some of the information leakage, you post-select to remove the information leakage. So that's the basic idea, right? Okay, and then, um, so it works, right? If you do it carefully, oh, that's the idea. <laughs> Get a lot of calculation, right? So the paper is very long, a lot of calculation, but the bottom line is, okay, if a small amount of inconsideration, in code is not perfect, it works. Okay, that's good. Let me just summarize, okay, so in case people can't remember what we discussed, just summarize the basic results. So perfect in is not necessary, okay, we have lost current protocol. Side channel is it's okay, right? You can verify a bit assumption a bit, right? So um, you can check, but right? you have to make sure that there are no side channels, right? And then if there's some side channel, you have to, come, you have to estimate how much information is this host. Perfect random number generation is not necessary. You can have use quantum random number generation. You can do some extractor function. I don't know if people know about a subject. You can do some post processing to uh, remove the um, imperfections. Parasitic phase optimization is not necessary. You can have um, discrete phase optimization with a few bits. Perfect intensity setting is not necessary. You can have uh, some intensity variations and if the variation is not too big, you can still prove security. The key rate is a bit lower, right? But of course, right, you have to quantify this. Okay, so this is a uh, great change in the last uh, few years, right? So the last 10 or years or so, where people lots, kind of lots of work to move, could remove this assumption to something more realistic, more reasonable. Okay. Questions? Okay, next subject. So this is a source, right? So, uh, so previously, we just talked about something as source. And let's look at the actual attack. So these are, it's not complete, right? I mean, uh, there are lots of attacks on the subject. Um, just as pass all this to give you some idea what attacks people can do. Uh, and I felt the most famous attack is probably the biking attack by Kim uh, um and Kula Breakers. And then I think Singapore also has an attack. Like, I think is we've been involved in some experience in Singapore. I can mention in field, right? Um, I forgot which paper it was, and uh, Singapore also has some paper on channel calibration or something, I can't remember which one. Okay, and then uh, my group also did the first two attacks, time shift attack and phase map attack, they were done in my groups um, with commercial QA systems. But let's see, uh, yeah. Okay, what's the main point? The main point is most attacks are on the measurement devices. And why is this the case? It turns out the measurement device is the RGLE's hill for QKG, the weakest link. For QKG, is the measurement device. And Charlie Bennett actually say, okay, yeah, just emphasize this, but Charlie Bennett says, oh, this is the uh, measurement device is the main problem in QKG. And why is it the case? 
the main reason is Yif can Yif is sitting in a bigger way. Yif can send in anything to Bob's system. Right? Yif can send in a strong pulse. Right? She can send in a laser. She can send an X-ray. Right? She can send a bomb <laughs> to Bob's system and see what happens. <laughs> and Bob is receiving. Right? Bob is expecting something. Right? Bob has to open his score right? to receive what is coming from Yif. Right? So the question is, how, how can Bob open the door and close the door at the same time? Right? Open the door enough to accept the quantum signal, but close the door enough that nothing else can come in. That's the question. Okay. Um, and because of that, right, um, yeah, it's a big mess in the measurement device. Counter measures, right? There are lots of counter measures people propose. Um, one approach, right, just classify right, the counter measure. One approach is security patches. Um, I think Koch, let's see, um, Koch-Schubert group right, um, is involved in the one, some of these um, papers. And so given an attack, of course, you can construct specific kind of measure. But if you know where the Yif is acting in your system, of course, you can construct kind of measures. The problem is, is um, a bit ad hoc, right? It's vulnerable to new attack, so someone can construct a new attack, maybe can, it's not secure anymore. The next approach is a very nice approach where it's, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful idea. So full device independent QQQ. So people know about device independent QQQ. Right. You want to, uh, it's based on the loophole feedback cast, right, which has recently been done. Right, um, at least against the most important loopholes, the low category loopholes and the mesh, the, the cache efficiency loopholes. So this is very nice. However, it has very strong requirement. It requires detectors with near perfect, near unity quantum efficiency. Right? So maybe 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. And even in that case, right, you want to go over long distance. The key rate for over long distance right, would be very low, 10 to minus 10 per pulse if you do some simulation. So it's very nice, and you, I think it could be done in the future, but it's not something that you want to do, or you should ask experimenters, like experimenters will say, I, it's, I don't want to do this experiment for application. Maybe for science, this is wonderful. I think we feel should as well on this, but for applications, right? If you ask some engineers who use for application for QKG, right? So the key with scan, the mass scan, can, the engineer may say, no, maybe, <laughs> maybe it's not the best application. <laughs> okay. Okay, so in summary, the scan comes out of the impact. Okay, so the question is, can we do something more practical? And of course, the answer is yes, otherwise I won't be uh, here in this colloquium. <laughs> and so uh, I would uh, advertise something that uh, we, we have done, this measurement device in the benefit of KK, so um, call about this subject. And so what's this motivation? Well, the motivation, as I've mentioned a little bit. So Alice, we can trust, trust Alice as Google preparation, where it's reasonable because Alice can secure her own lab and know what she's doing. Right, so you trust your graduate student right, in the lab doing <laughs> escape preparation somehow. Um, however, right, Bob, right, Bob is receiving something from Eve, and most attacks are on Bob, right, so on the measurement device, so you don't really trust Bob. It's not reasonable to assume Bob's um, measurement would be perfect, and she, he can receive information unknown signals from the shopper. Okay, and from the quantum hacking, we know the weakest link is quite often a measurement device, the weakest measurement device. Okay, so now we, now we want to remove this weakest link, right? solve one major part of the problem. And the setup is, uh, is symmetric, so Alice and Bob are symmetric. So Alice and Bob are sending signals, like a PPSM signal, send to, to Charlie. Charlie or Yves, you can trust Charlie, right? I trust Charlie Bennett, but I can, you can trust, this general Charlie, this is not Charlie Bennett, okay? <laughs> you can't trust him, okay? Um, it's the Roger, right, or AK and K or Huawei or whatever company you put in, right? So one in the network, you can really trust the network provider, and you can have to trust him. It's measurement device independent, so you can trust the measurement device in QKG, MTI QKG. It's very untrusted measurement device. This is good, you can, you can have a certified device. So we propose this idea. We means uh, Marcos Turkey, Kaka Pingji, and myself in 2012, so six years ago, we proposed this idea. Okay. And, oh, the good thing is a bad box. You don't know what's inside this bad box, so it's totally that, right? So um, there's no, so you can put the, 
Yeah, you, can, you can put any memory. You can make a device. Actually, easy. I mean, there's nothing that you assume about this black box. And the good thing is, automatically in milk to all the detector side channel attacks. It doesn't matter um, what Eve does here. Eve make a device, Eve perform a measurement, and announce the result. This is good for the certification standpoint because there's no need to certify the measurement device. So uh, this is wonderful, right? You can outsource, right? So people like outsourcing. You can outsource the device to any company to manufacture this device, and you will still be secure. Okay, of course, right, there's no free lunch, so uh, you have to assume something. The assumption is that the sources are trusted. You still have to assume you know what you, others know what she's doing in her lab. And this is the problem that I discussed previously, like right, on the source imperfection. Right? So you have to quantify the source, understand what's going on in, this, in, in, in her own lab. Once you have done that, then you will be secure. Okay. Okay. Okay, with our MGI QQQ, right, people with the news, right, get a lot of discussions about um, investigation on uh, uh, different uh, companies like um, Huawei and SAP right? And with MGI QQQ, Donald Trump and uh, <laughs> <laughs> President Putin, they can have a conversation in private, right? Uh, well, kind of in public, right? So, so people know what right? uh, Donald Trump talking to Putin through this network. Okay, however, they don't know what they're talking about, so they just know someone is talking, but they don't know what they're talking. And then this device could be made by Country X. So that's the good news. So country X could be the worst enemy of the US or, or Russia. It's still okay. So guess is good. <laughs> yeah, so guess is what quantum mechanics can offer. Right? It's called quantum mechanics. wonderful it's, uh, for communication security. Okay, so uh, I'm going to so I won't go into details, but this is the mechanical setup. So I this weak coherent pulse, so some laser, you alternate the laser pulse. Polarization modulation. Decoy scale, you make different intensities, alternate the signal. A bulb does the same thing, it's the same symmetric setup, right? so every user is the same. Except a network is a measurement device. It's doing this bell scale measurement, it's very simple. A beam speaker, polarization beam speaker, and then measuring horizontal, vertical polarization, and so on. This is, by the way, this is a swap cast, right, for the computer scientist. So you're just doing a swap cast between the two uh, signal. Okay. Uh, and this is how you implement swap cast in uh, quantum optics. Okay, and this swap cast, right, um, if you this way, is Charlie and Yves performing a bell scale measurement. Okay. Uh, actually, this is something that people did before, right, before QKK, right, so this is commonly used right, in quantum optics. Right? We are just borrowing the idea here and use it. Right? And it turns out to be a wonderful idea for security. Um, and oh, I, sh I should add mention one part because I mean I will be using this point in later. It turns out the two bases are not not symmetric um, in the actual implementation because no kids get gets a polarizing beam speaker, right? You you are choosing some bases to perform a measurement. So the bases you perform measurement is H and V. You call this this H and V. And so you define this uh, basis, C basis, H and V, is defined by the poison bin speaker here. Okay. So um, that's one basis. And the orthogonal basis could be, you can call it X basis, could be 45 per minute. Per so they are not symmetric. Okay. That's a very important point here. So uh, just, sometimes people are confused. Right? People think the bell measurement is symmetric, right? but it's not symmetric in the actual implementation. Uh, especially for multi photons, right? this is uh, a key here. Okay, let's talk about single photon first, right? Get simpler. And for single photons, right, why is it secure, right? So, so it seems impossible, right? So I will explain why is it secure. Okay, for single photons, so conceptually, Alice prepares some antenna skates, Bob makes some antenna pair, and gives an equivalent EPL description, right? So. Um, Equivalently, so this is what Alice and Bob are doing. So Alice prepare some EPL, Bob prepare and send it to Charlie. Charlie perform a bell scale measurement, connect antenna swapping, right? So this antenna swapping. And now Alice and Bob and can go and the focus and candles. Now we can perform measurement and check the correlation. Okay, and it's secure because, right, so whatever Charlie is doing, Charlie will announce, right, the bell scale is psi or something, right? So antenna swapping will say they have an antenna. And Alice can verify, right, they have some results. Like you can verify BBA4 or something, you can verify the correlation. Right? 
So I said, well, don't have to trust Charlie, right? Charlie is some um, random guy in the street, right? So we don't trust Charlie, they just check the correlation, right? Mathematically, this is what's happening. But physically, of course, right, this is challenging to prepare the scale and so on. So physically, what we do is on the right-hand side. Physically, the measurement by Alice is done in the beginning. Conceptually, you imagine Alice prepare this EPL scale and measure it right away. Now it becomes BBA4, basically, right? So Alice prepare BBA4 scale and send this to uh, Charlie. Bob prepares BBA4 scale and send this to Charlie, right? And then Charlie performs a bell scale measurement. Mathematically, they have the same protocol because these two measurements, right? Charlie's measurement commute with the measurement by Alice and Bob, right? Because they all have a different physical system, right? So they commute. So it doesn't matter whether Charlie measures first or Alice and Bob measures first. Right, so you can reverse the organ. So instead of Charlie measure, I suppose measure here first, and then Charlie measure, and it should be the same mathematically. Right, you do a calculation, like all the properties are the same. Okay, so if this is secure, then here the this should be secure as well. Right, so that's the idea. And in fact, this idea is quite old. Right, so when you look at the literature, so um, um, well, I will come to like the reference. So, oh, the good thing is the bell scale measurement tells a correlation between us and bus bit. So they say Charlie tells you. I and Bob have the same bit, or I and Bob have different bits. But Charlie has no idea what I and Bob's bits are really are. Okay, Charlie just know the parity. Right? And this kind of idea, actually, when you look it up, uh, it turns out it was uh, first proposed in 1996 by B. Ham, uh, Hunter, and uh, Carl Moore in this PLA paper. And then in the Mori, um, he uh, proved the security, right, not only for this program, but also he, he put in some with Korean post. Uh, I think it was before the case, right, but he put in a couple with Korean post. And he proved that it's still secure. Okay. So people know about this idea for a long time, like right, that in 1996. Okay, but no one thinks this is useful, right, because this is simply like curiosity. Right? So what we did is we use this idea. And then we modify it and we put in some decoy state. So that's the change we put in the system. Because by that time, right, we, we have decoy state. We, why don't we use decoy state and make it more useful? OK, so now, I mean, just remind people the assumption as much as can measurement device, try this and trust, and Alice and Buck can, mod can modify in the using decoy state. And get cancel could be enough to improve the performance. And uh, oh, I, yeah, by the way, I was just surprised by right? so our paper published and was cited many times already, and uh, it's even called the first some of the um, cough can hot topics in math, computer science, and math and I don't know what this means, but <laughs> it's just in the survey uh, done by the Child Academy of Science and Care and Analytics, which is the uh, formerly it was called the Commerce uh, Workers, right? But, so it's a citation company, right? Looking at the citation, and then I don't know how they get the um, Calculation, but they say that uh, it's pretty good. Of course, it's not cited as well as the BBA for the one is not quite far away, but uh, at least uh, recently it's, a, it's an interesting subject. Okay, and the good thing is experiments can be done. Right? So, so we propose this, by the way, we propose this in 2012, right? And it's very competitive in this field. Okay, and then in 2013, 2014, there are four experiments already in Calgary, uh, Brazil. USTC China and also our group uh, in Toronto. Um, so for implementation in just uh, two years. Okay. And recently, okay, what's the new progress? So I want to cover something new. Right? So um, instead of just about what did what was done four years ago. So there's a recent um, demonstration and theory um, how we can make this proposal more scalable, scalable MGQ. So we believe the um, I mean. MGQGG would be useful in the network setting, right? Not just pond one in the network. And then in the network, right? So um, people, well, for example, you go to banking, right? So maybe you trust the bank, but then you don't trust the network. So how can you go QGG with untrusted relate? Okay, that's beyond uh, what people are doing right now, right? So right now, um, in Shanghai, Beijing network, you trust the relays, right? But what if you don't trust the relays? Can you communicate from here to there without trusting the relay nodes? MGQ should be able to do that, right? at least um, in a reasonable distance, right? 400 kilometers or something, you should be able to do that. But the point is, right, in the network, right, of course, right, um, people 
go online right, and people buy new phone numbers and so on. So the network should be able to dynamically add or delete users, right, delete nodes at arbitrary location. Which means like the channel loss right, could be very different, right? So uh, maybe, uh, for example, uh, this guy is going to this network and this may be much further away. So get an asymmetric channel. So that's what we are trying to talk about. And there are two papers I will mention here um, by um, our collaborators. So there's a theory paper um, we uh, posted in July this year, and there's an experimental paper we posted in uh, August this year. Okay, now you put in a new user, and yeah, the new user will set up these um, new nodes, and now you have to communicate with the new user. Okay, asymmetric MGQA, so the channel, this is a longer distance, there's more loss, this is short distance, less loss, asymmetric channel loss with different transmittance. Okay, so how are we going to solve this problem? So we allow different laser in cancer case. Okay, guys, lot different channel loss. Why don't you use different in cancer case? Okay. And so this is uh, what we proposed in um, July. So this paper by my student, um, Mike, um, Wen Yan Wong, and Fei Hu, and myself. Okay, but actually, we actually did the, uh, not we, but I mean, we had collaborators, USKC, like USKC group did this demonstration. Um, and uh, they have this uh, setup, and this is nine, four kilo, nine kilometers in one arm, and this is 10 kilometers in the other arm. Previously, right, what people do is you, they have to add an additional fiber. Right? So even though it's only 10 kilometers, they put a new fiber to balance the loss. But this is, this is not, a bad, not the best idea. Right? So we're saying that you can do better. Okay, and you now set up with Google actual optimization, we get, uh, well, you know, well, of course, this is an extreme case. In some extreme case, you can get a huge increase in the key weight, and, but the key points, you can increase the distance. So for six, some eight key to 120 kilometers using this uh, new idea, new protocol. Okay, so the experimental paper is uh, on the archive. So we can look at that. And so we are comparing to the previous result, which is the reference one here, um, by Sibing Wong here. So this is symmetric uh, setup. Okay, so using asymmetry, right, we can much improve the performance. Um, parameter choice. So previously, right, so uh, there's a set basis and x basis, and in this uh, protocol by Wong, I, um, you do um, you use one intensity only for the set basis. It's not symmetric, right? So and for x basis, you have three intensity: mu, nu, omega. But it's, but it's symmetric in R's and box, so R's and box have the same uh, intensity. In our new protocol, it's not symmetric, so SA, SB, so they have different intensity. Similarly, right, mu A, you have a label A and B, different intensity for R's and box. Okay. And so you can look at the parameters, um, you have different intensity, and you have different probability. Okay, so uh, there are lots of parameters here, right, so it becomes very messy. So now we run into this optimization issue. Um, but let me just present the basic physics idea, right? Because, I mean, I'm a physicist myself, I like physics, so inclusion. In the x basis, right? x basis is the orthogonal basis to the um, polarizing bin speaker. The physics is actual m gap, right? We are really talking about Hangelman interference. We are using weak coherent powers, we can never reach, uh, so, it's well known in quantum optics, right? Actual M gap is at most 50%, right? With weak coherent pulse. And this is used in this M gap setup, and you can see it translates to 0 0.25 to QBL for the X basis. That's the best you can get, you can get if you have if you match the intensity perfectly. If the intensity is mismatched, the, in the QBL goes up. Okay, so in X basis, right? Because actual M gap, you require very highly uh, symmetric. Uh, Arriving in intensity. So in intensity, which arrives to the bin speaker, um, has to be uh, symmetric. So it's mu a, nu a, nu is the channel loss, right? So the intensity in the in original Alice laser going to a channel, after going through a channel, has to be the same as the intensity that Bob is sending, is, um, sending and arriving at the bin speaker. That's the x basis. However, however, uh, I should emphasize in the uh, c basis. C basis is what you use for key generation. In a C basis, that's not the case. Um, 
It turns out we found that this C-basis is not related to HOM given the call. Right? If you look at the QBR, right, so this QBR can go as low as uh, zero. Right? So ideally, right, if perfect alignment, you can get zero QBR. And that's because you have polarizing bin speaker and then you have um, matching HB basis. So if you have multi photons, right? So if Alice is sending, uh, say, two horizontal photons, it doesn't matter, right? So with polarizing bin speaker, two photons would go in the same path anyway, right? So the two photons are horizontal, so you have this polarizing bin speaker, you go horizontal. There's no additional QBL, even for multi photons. Right? So that's a, a simple point, but it turns out very important here. And because of that, there's an asymmetry between the QBs, it's not really good actual MGIP. So that's something that people may not appreciate in the beginning. So actually, when we wrote the paper, the referee campaign, right? So why this actual MGIP, why would it be possible to, to do better? But it turns out this is not really good actual MGIP. That's something more. OK, so because I guess not sensitive to arriving in intensity, right? we can uh, modify it. So now they're not equal. And you can do a trade off. Right? You now you can do engineering. You can trade off between the uh, matching of intensity, right, which will be good for lower end QPR, but you don't have to, right? So even if you can mismatch the QPR, will still be quite low, right? So this is 2%, right? Very quite low QPR, even if you have a big mismatch. Now you can trade off, and you want to optimize the key rate, which means you want to optimize the probability of detection, right? So you want to make sure that you have a big um, probability to get coincidence. So this, you just, this is just the um, Coincidence probability, if you like. Okay, so we have this trade off you do, right? and then uh, actually, by the student, right, we won the best paper award in, um, in the QCRIP uh, conference in 2018, so let's congratulate him. Um, okay, so uh, I guess uh, for much scalable MKQQ, but uh, I will just mention one uh, topic. Um, we also did some machine learning. Um, it's a simple paper, we post it to the archive, so if people saw this paper, you can look into it. So we use machine learning, something simple to learn the key wave formula, I should try to learn the key wave formula of uh, GKSKQKG. Um, and this is useful for our organization. So it turns out you can use machine learning in this kind of setup, but I mean, it was not used in the original paper, but uh, recently we realized that this could be useful. Let's see, um, I'm running out of time, I must see. Okay, maybe I just wrap up. So we also get somewhere on train field QKG. I don't know, do people know about this train field QKG pieces? No? Okay, there's one paper right, in Nature, right, by Koshiba Group, right? So uh, in Nature in May 2018. So uh, they, they have this conjecture. It's not proven. They have a conjecture. They propose a protocol. They conjecture that it will be secure and give a uh, higher key weight. And there's a fundamental limit called this um, pole band. People know about this pole band? Yes or no? No. Okay, so this is pole band. is the fundamental limit for... Um, for information transmission quantum mechanics, you have a quantum channel, right? Some loss because of loss, right? And you, you can also put in action error. There's some limit on how much um, how much entanglement can be transmitted in a quantum channel, right? And this uh, fundamental limit uh, is one of them is whole band, the other one is a key GW band. Um, there are fundamental limits, right? But fundamental limits could be broken. So it turns out you can break this fundamental limit, and this is proposed here, but it's not proven, right? So what we do is that we propose the good circuit proof. Like I'm mentioning these two papers here, but I mean, actually, there are far more than two papers. If you look at this paper, it was published in May. There are like, um, I forgot, maybe 20, 30 citations already. There are lots of proposals on how we can use this. So this is a cool example we get. Okay, I should mention other groups have done it. Like US, I think US KC group has done it. Norbert has done it. Uh, who else has done it? Um, slipping my mind. But. Ah, Sun Feng also has done it. Yeah, so there have been quite a few security pools on this subject. Okay. And then in the QCRIP conference, uh, Marco provides this graph and saying that there's a pool ban here. But you can bridge it actually because these proofs, right? Um, two of them are shown here. So actually prove that you can get a higher key weight and defeating this uh, fundamental limit. And the reason is very simple because Charlie is in the middle, right? So the fundamental assumes there's nothing in the middle. But in this case, right, Charlie is doing some measurement. Okay. And, and, and the good thing is, the funny thing is this case, uh, oh, let me just have a chin to quickly. So Alice and Bob, more give a signal, sending to Charlie. The chin field is like MGQ, except we measure the singles. You measure the relative phase between Alice and Bob. So the key comes from one photon. So the one photon is either coming from Alice or Bob. And you interfere, and you extract the relative phase between these two. 
actually not cool full concept, it's one for <laughs> very good phase between these cool bins. <laughs> okay, and it works for singles, right? It's very surprising. And then uh, you can tell where you can prove that the key. The loss is much smaller because of the effect if you are putting eyes and bob, right? even though they're far away, the effect if they are together, they're generating one single photon and sending it. <laughs> okay, um, uh, so chain frequency, I mean, some people also call this, I mean, like MKK with singles, right? depending on how you want to call it. Uh, one of time, so maybe I would not go into details, but you can talk about quantum, quantum internet, and then you can uh, use MKK, quantum repeaters, and so on and so forth. And low cost device, we also get some on silicon for quantum security. You can read this paper in Africa. I don't have time to go into that. So it's very small, three millimeter, one millimeter. And I also get some on awful kind of computer with Koji and uh, Kamaki. So uh, the idea is that we want to remove quantum memories in the system using photons only, based on photons only. You need this photon that we pick a state, something like this. It's a complete graph space, and then there's a second leaf qubit. It's a measurement based for, for also. It's based on time reverse. Like measurement based quantum computation, based on time reversal, right? So you do a time reverse executive bell measurement. Okay, so let me just uh, conclude by thanking some of my, oh, I should thank my group members. I, I forgot to put in the, um, the list here. So it's a long list of group members. Also a collaborator, some of them are here. Um, so um, yeah, maybe I should not go for all the names, but let me people <laughs> just sort of focus. And, that's it, and then let me just thank the funding agencies and um, all the people involved. Okay, thank you.